What happens when a group of the world's greatest minds gifted with wealth beyond our imagination buys a sprawling waterfront property in Toronto? They make plans for a $14.3 billion futuristic city, that's what. Sidewalk Labs released its master innovation and development plans to turn a chunk of Toronto's Lake Ontario shoreline into the most futuristic city in the world. It would result in over 93,000 jobs and a better standard of living for its residents. And today, we're going to take a peek inside. Welcome back to our channel. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you never miss a video from us. Google X Sidewalk Smart City Alphabet, an umbrella company that includes Google and Sidewalk Labs, is now creating the world's first smart city in Toronto, Canada. It seeks to provide technological solutions to improve citizens' lives. There will be two key areas. Quayside, which is along the shorelines of Lake Ontario and features houses, shops, and offices. The first office here, of course, will be Google's. The second area is the River District, an area of 152 acres featuring five neighborhoods surrounding the Don River. Now, on the housing front, there's a plan for a collection of new mixed-use buildings up to 30 stories tall. The project would cost around $3.9 billion and would use mass timber and modular components made in the local factory owned by Sidewalk Labs. To get around, the city will have a $1.2 billion light rail extension, which would connect the neighborhoods to mass transit before the new residents move in. It would cut down on the need for residents to own a car, and it would be safe and affordable. Canada is known for its somewhat overwhelming winters. You've heard the jokes. Well, the hyper-local weather sensors would would detect an oncoming snowstorm and heat up the snow melting pavements. It would keep the streets clearer for pedestrians and cyclists, as well as autonomous delivery robots. It's all going to be connected, heavily monitored, and pretty much self-regulating. Wi-Fi would be available for everyone throughout the city for free, and sensors around the area would collect data on the energy usage, traffic patterns, and much, much more to ensure you as a resident lead the most comfortable life possible. What's more, the city is going to be climate positive, aka netting a sub-zero carbon footprint. But we already expected that, right? In Toronto, Sidewalk Labs shows a picture of a world with intelligent pay-as-you-throw garbage chutes that separate your plastic from papers for you. The city would charge households by waste, and apps would tell residents when chairs on the waterfront were open so residents can get approvals for block party permits. In addition, traffic signals will auto-calibrate to ease pedestrian congestion during public events and rush hours. The director of Sidewalk Labs, Eric Jaffe, was primarily responsible for this impressive proposal. He expects, or rather hopes, that more cities around the world will pick up on this blueprint and use it for themselves. One of those ideas is for a factory-built housing. It helps developers complete their projects reliably, on time, and at a lower cost. Critique and Government Approval before all that, though, government officials have to scrutinize and approve Sidewalk Lab's master plan. Or not. And don't expect the process to be a snap. Some of the major elements of the project have shifted over time, and so have the targets of the project's detractors. When Waterfront Toronto, the government-appointed non-profit developer of Toronto's Eastern Shore, chose Sidewalk Labs to plan their smart city development, the most controversial point of the plan was the idea that a Google sister company planned to harvest data in public space. Over time, Sidewalk Labs was criticized for not revealing how they would use the data and who would control it. And for a while there, the Canadian Civil Liberties Association sued the government to stop the project. So sure, Sidewalk Labs dreamt of making a section of Toronto a futuristic city, the likes of which we've only ever seen in science fiction. But skeptics saw a darker side. Thousands of cameras monitoring streets and data from every household being taken and used. This was one among many things their CEO, Sundar Pichai, had to testify about when he was called to Congress and pretty much grilled for three and a half hours. For those reasons, and perhaps others, the Sidewalk Toronto project was abandoned in May of 2020 to give way for a new kind of city. As exciting as the new city would have been, we still lost the chance to have an internet-first community, which promised affordable internet and precise data on our carbon footprint and consumption to live more sustainable lifestyles. We lost a fully integrated transport system, social housing, 93,000 jobs, and finally, a green city initiative. But bigger things are to come. The new city in Toronto. Now, Quayside will have a new, different kind of development. The government called for proposals when Google and Toronto parted ways, and these new plans seem to center on affordability, low-carbon design, and an emphasis on local and minority-owned businesses instead of what some have called a dystopian nightmare. 
there's a lot to be done. So far, the plans only include glossy renderings of wooden skyscrapers and the integration of elements of Lake Ontario into parks and recreational areas. But one thing's for sure, it won't be a Google Smart City. Would you want to live in a Google City? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and check out more on the Simply Tech channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.